Originally, I was not going to make this video, but then Free for Free released a blog post and Q&A, which both went in depth about how vehicles will operate within the sandbox of Halo Infinite. Arguably, the most exciting piece of news came out of the Q&A. In the Q&A, Free for Free confirmed that you will be able to grappling hook onto vehicles and then hijack them. However, from the way they talked about it, it will require skill, timing, and precision to execute it. You can absolutely uh, use the grapple shot to skyjack the Banshee. It's not something that is just going to be given out for free. It's just going to be something that with a player's skill and we want to re reward that creativity. So yeah, you can do that. Unfortunately, there'll be no way to tell whether or not the physics engine will actually be up to it. We'll just have to wait until we are shown some gameplay or given the physical game itself to play. But hopefully we won't have to wait too long. They did tease that in a couple of months there will be another trailer of some description coming out. Quindell Hoyle also elaborated on vehicle destructibility. Ever since Halo 2, Halo has always prided itself on how destructible its vehicles are and now it will have an impact on gameplay. We saw in the Halo Infinite gameplay demo that when John ran over a suicide grunt it pops the tire and then the vehicle started skidding across the ground a bit. So now when chunks fly off your warthog, when you accidentally drive into a wall, that will no longer be aesthetical, that will now impacts the gameplay. So now if you pop a tire on the right side of the warthog, it will now start to lean just a little over to the right and you'll have to compensate for that when you're driving the warthog about. Another example brought up within the Q&A was the Banshee. So when you're flying about and you're just getting peppered from small arms fire from everyone on the enemy team just waiting to destroy the Banshee because you're just giving them such a hard time with it and they chip off bits of the wing that will now influence the steering of your Banshee and you will have to pilot it in a way that you wouldn't have done before to adjust for the destruction of vital uh, systems on board. And you see this is how you innovate Halo, this is how you modernise it. You take mechanics that have existed for years within the franchise and elaborate upon it. So now there will be potentially serious consequences for chunks flying off your vehicle. You'll no longer be able to just ignore it, you will have to take this into account now. On 343's blog post on Halo Waypoint, 343 talked about how one of their targets was to narrow down and define the archetypes for sandbox elements. What I mean by this is like there will now be kinetic and plasma and I presume Prometheans will be in infinite so hard light as well and that was like part of the little description underneath the weapons icon to pick it up in the demo but it's not just guns that have archetypes within halo there is a difference between how covenant and unsc vehicles fundamentally operate and v for free will also be expanding on these legacy roles so the examples they use was a warthog might not be the optimal choice to travel across a marsh so you might want to use a ghost instead but equally rocky terrain isn't the best suit for the ghost either so you might want to use a warthog instead or uh, jumps ghosts aren't the best at jumps yes you have the boost but at least in game i don't know about in universe but in game the warthog has more weight behind it to continue its momentum and push it further and I think it's good that they are doubling down on these niches that items in the sandbox fulfilled in legacy games. And this does have room for expansion. For example, with guns, I know this is a vehicle video, but just for example, guns, the return of the flamethrower could deduce fire or something as a damage archetype, or for example, 343 could add the Reaver and the Locust to banished vehicles that made an appearance in Halo Wars 2 into Halo Infinite, and then add a Walker vehicle archetype. I know I used Rocky Terrain as an example, but Walkers could be better on Rocky Terrain than any other type of vehicle, so you know, you can see how this kind of interplays with each other, where one vehicle's weakness could be another's strength. I know this video was a bit of a shorter one, but I thought this was some very important information I should probably share, since at the time of this recording, no other creator has made a video about it so far. So, you know, if you could do all the regular YouTube things, that would be appreciated very, very much. And on the right, there will be a video I made about Halo Infinite's weapons sandbox. 